going to be here through next weekend. Okay. So and we're here for six shows, this being the first, and we're here through uh, next Saturday. So a total of you know, two weeks total since we got here on the island. But I'll let these guys answer the other yeah. questions. Well, you know, how, yeah. how do we feel about being here? First of all, this yeah. is paradise, as you know. So it's a dream come true. I mean, to be in a wonderful, beautiful country like this and do what I love to do, sing, and for a great cause, it is really, I, I don't take it for granted. And when I wake up in the morning, the sunshine and the beach and the pool, it's just wonderful. And then to get on stage at night and perform with these wonderful guys, it is amazing. I'm so, so happy to be here. That's why I'm here for all the shows that we've done here. And yeah, just to read it, what she's saying, what an amazing opportunity to come and sing with incredible musicians, incredible singers, to be a part of this incredible event and really to, to tackle something that's really needed here on the island, to be a part of that. It's humbling, and it's a great thing to be a part of, so we're really proud to be here. I've written musicals, and with two, two musicals, Grumpy Old Men the Musical and Tim and Scrooge the Musical, with Nick Meglin, the editor of magazine, Mad Magazine, for over 35 years. So that's very funny, and so that's so random except the word named Berg, but no, I'm not related to Dave Berg, but I know Nick Meglin, the other editor of Mad Magazine, very well. I did on Broadway, um, I played the role of Celia, and that was such a powerful, powerful role to play. She ranged from the age of about 12 years old to 60 years old, so I loved the colors that I was able to play. And the second one is a musical that I wrote, which is entitled Sheeta, it opened on Broadway. And it's similar to The Color Purple, where I play roles from the age of about nine years old to about 60 as well. And it's amazing to see the response from the audience. They, you know, they love the story, they love the journey, and I love doing stories that empower people because I'm all about empowerment. I have a funny, a funny addendum, a funny story I just learned during intermission, by the way. So I've known Jeanette for months now. Months. We've, we've, mm -hmm. right, not, not for years, like I know everybody else, but months. And I knew, of course, how incredibly talented she was, and we've gotten a chance to perform several concerts by now, and that's when I knew I wanted to invite her down to Barbados. My bass player, Abraham Sainz, who played with Tilo Puente and Celia Cruz, we're all from New York. I was born in the Bronx. You were born in the Bronx. Abraham, even though his family's from Peru, he was born in Queens. We just found out during intermission that Abraham Sainz, our bass player, and Jeanette went to the same high school. We just found that out during intermission. And graduated the same year. And graduated the same year. Isn't that amazing? And they're both 19 years old, only one year <laughs> out of high school. <laughs> Jacob, who asked me if I would bring the show back. And I said it depended upon why we would do the show. Fortunately, we uh, came up with this wonderful charity with Dr. Hassel, something that's greatly needed in Barbados to upgrade the equipment and the tools that the doctors use here in Barbados. We have wonderful physicians here, but they don't have a lot of the tools. So what we're trying to do is upgrade the uh, equipment, diagnostic and monitoring equipment by helping Dr. Hassel set up her medical ICU unit. And uh, if we are successful or continue to be as successful and get the support that we've been having, we may have an opportunity to expand further, perhaps into the emergency department or whatever, but we'll get the intensive care unit going first. But it was through the vision of Jacob and Mikkel we brought the show back, and um, so far it's, I believe, going very successfully. We've gotten some wonderful support this year. We have some continuing support. We have some people from overseas who are, uh, have offered to help and assist us, some foundations, some charities, um, and some business people from Canada. So uh, we'd like to think that we can continue to grow and expand this and raise more funds, obviously, to uh, expand what we're able to do for the hospital. I think it's also fair to say that as, as we're doing this as a private sector initiative, we would invite other private sector businesses 
to either come on board with us or if they prefer to identify their own project at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital because goodness knows there's all kinds of areas that needs an upgrade in equipment and help and support and uh, so I would invite them all to to join with us or to join with us in their own project and to uh, help the hospital so that all of Barbadians can have an elevated and improved uh, critical care if and when the misfortune should arise. Part of uh every community that we set our roots in. Uh, so the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we, uh, we see this project a, a unique project. There's many that are important, but this one, it, uh, it ranges on, on a very broad uh, spectrum of so many important things for, for Barbados. Uh, Mr. Bork mentioned health the hospital, which is uh, an essential for, for any society. It's uh, essential for Barbados to set itself in a different uh, level from other Caribbean islands. But let's not forget culture, tourism, integration of, of, of the different level of society of Barbados. The product to Barbados really is, 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 a, is a show that it's meant for everyone. Tourism, uh, locals, old, young, from any uh, part of, of the society. So we're very privileged that we had an opportunity to be part of it and to get such a talent to Barbados.